Okay. Uh, good evening, all of you. Uh, welcome to this lecture of refrigeration air conditioning. So, like uh, in last lecture, uh, I have to take a uh, quiz because uh, I thought that there was your uh, training and placement se uh, session. But later, uh, the answer told me that the session was already over. So, I was not prepared and uh, I have to take a quiz. Uh, so, in that uh, lecture, I have taken quiz related to our chapter one and uh, one another quiz was related to your APT. Uh, some question related to logical reasoning, uh, mathematics, and some questions related to your verbal ability. So that was in last lecture. So today we'll uh, what we'll do? Uh, we'll uh, revise first uh, our uh, uh, this fifth chapter's first lecture. Uh, some concept I have taken already. Then uh, we can move forward. Okay. So, so in last lecture uh, we started uh, with the uh, uh, air. So air, when I say atmospheric air, uh, it is a mixture of various things, right? So first it is a mixture of uh, various gases. So let me first. So it is a mixture of various gases that you already know, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, helium, and hydrogen. So that percentage also we know that uh, oxygen is 21% by volume, nitrogen is the uh, 70% and other gases fall under that 1% category. Then we have a water vapors present in it. So this water is being evaporated from the ocean uh, rivers. So uh, from that water is evaporated and that is collected in the atmospheric air. So when I say mixture of permanent gases and water vapor, if I mix this together, this will be called as moist air. Then we have dust particles, fumes, soot particles coming out, out of exhaust pipes. So that uh, when I account this also uh, in this category, so all this thing, mixture of these three things, what we call it as a atmospheric air. Now another thing in this the, uh, in this is that uh, as we go up from this mean sea level, so this concentration concentration of uh, dust and water particles reduces as we go up from the mean sea level, and uh, at a certain level, let us say 10 kilometers from our ground level, uh, we get a pure dry air. So that is a mixture of permanent gases, right? So this we seen uh, we have seen this in the last lecture atmospheric air it is a combination of mixture of gases water vapor and dust particles if I take mixture of gases and water vapor or this will be called as dry air okay if I take mixture of dry air and water vapor that will be called as moist air then we have seen this uh, dry air this table shows the uh, contribution of individual gases so oxygen by its small fraction it is a 21%, nitrogen 78%, argon and other gases fall under the 1% category, okay. Then the molecular weight of dry air is 28.96, generally we take this as a 28. Then the gas constant for the dry air that we already know and uh, we have solved various numericals based on this value. So it is a 287 joule per kg Kelvin, okay. If I take a mixture of dry air and uh, moisture, so that will be called as moist air. So moist air can be thought of as a mixture of dry air and moisture. Then was a, there was a concept of uh, saturated air. So saturated air means uh, it refers to condition where air can no longer hold the water particles, okay. So we, so we call that condition as a saturated air condition. That air we call it as a saturated air. So at a given temperature pressure, the dry air can uh, only hold a certain maximum amount of moisture. So with that <coughs> pressure reaches to its saturation value, pressure uh, reaches to its uh, saturation value, or the temperature reaches to its saturation temperature value, that time what will happen, water vapors will start to condensate. So this, this refers to the condition uh, when you um, take out a water bottle from your fridge, that time some dews are formed. So water particles are condensing on the surface of the bottle. So that we call it, uh, that uh, phenomenon what we call it as a condensation. Then we have seen the Dalton's law of partial pressure in last lecture. So it is actually <coughs> a cumulative law. So if I take a mixture of two gases, so there is a mixture of two gases here. So gas A plus gas B, then we get a mixture of gas A and B. So if I take a total pressure inside this system, mixture pressure, so mathematically it is the summation of individual pressures, okay. So in this mixture, whatever pressure exerted by gas A, that will be called as partial pressure of gas A. 
whatever pressure exerted by gas B that will be called as partial pressure of gas B. And the summation of this partial pressure will give you the total pressure inside the system. So that is what a Dalton's law of partial pressure. Okay, this holds good for the gases. For the liquids, we have second that is the Rook's law that holds good for the liquid that uh, I have added in the MCQ, which uh, I have taken uh, last to last lecture. Okay. Then speaking about the properties of uh, moist air, so first thing comes into our mind it is or in the syllabus it is the temperature. So up to this point in your career you have did only one temperature value, but in actual there are three temperature values. First is dry bulb temperature, second is wet bulb temperature, and third is dew point temperature. Now dry bulb temperature is a regular temperature what you get from the thermometer. If I hold a thermometer in the atmospheric air, whatever temperature you will get that will be uh, dry bulb temperature. <coughs> Now to the same thermometer, the thermometer is the so in thermometer contains the uh, Hg, that is a mercury. So that bottom portion of mercury, if I cover it by a wet cloth, if I cover that uh, mercury part with the wet cloth, I mean if I swing it in, in, in the air to remove the excess amount of water, what will happen due to evaporation of water? Uh, some energy will be extracted from the thermometer and then there will be a temperature drop. <coughs> Whatever temperature you will get after that, that will be called as wet bulb temperature. So this phenomenon is uh, very common. So in summer, uh, in summer uh, conditions, what we use the water cooler. We pour water inside the water cooler. There is a mesh. In that mesh, this water is drip. Then we have a fan. This uh, fan creates the pressure difference. Because of pressure difference, these water particles come out of mesh. They are mixed in the air. When that uh, breeze of air comes onto your face or it comes in contact with your body, uh, there is an increase in heat of transfer. There is an uh, increase in tra transfer of heat. Okay, So because of this increase in transfer of heat, uh, you feel that uh, it is a cold. Okay, So this concept also I have uh, explained in one of my lecture. This is a, there is a myth about temperature. Okay, So if I hold in one hand a piece of steel, in another hand if I hold a piece of plastic, uh, what I feel is that uh, the steel is kind of at lower temperature. But if you see the temperature of both is same, that is the atmospheric temperature. But what happens, rate of rate of heat transfer from the steel to the, our my, uh, from my body to steel is higher compared to plastic. So that is why as the rate of heat transfer is uh, greater in case of steel, I feel that steel is at lower temperature. So similar case what happens when you start the water cooler, water cooler was to say water plus air is a mixture by air. So that picture has a <coughs> capacity to increase the rate of heat transfer. Because of that, you feel that there is a reduction in temperature. So that is about the wet bulb temperature. Then third, we have dew point temperature. So that we see today also. So <coughs> dew point temperature, it is the temperature at which the liquid droplets just appear when the moist air is cooled continuously. So this refers to the saturated condition. Yes, air saturated and gases. When they have maximum capacity of possible gas, they can touch up the water particles hold for such a time. There is a temperature as that we call it as a dew point temperature. If I reduce the temperature, water particles will start to condense it on the surface. So that is about the dew point temperature. Then I showed the device. Uh, so this is a device sling psychrometer which is used to calculate both dBT and WBT. So in one scale we calculate the uh, w, uh, dbt dry bulb temperature in another case what happens this thermometer this bottom is covered with a wet cloth so because of uh, evaporation of water there is a rate of heat transfer is increased and there is a reduction in temperature so that temperature reduced temperature what we get uh, that we call it as a wet bulb temperature okay so in the thing slightrometer we have two scale one scale is for dbt another scale is for wbt in another image, there it is shown is a it is a digital psychrometer. So there is no need to uh, hold a handle and then to rotate the same psychrometer. This is a stationary digital psychrometer. You can just uh, put it in atmospheric air. It will calculate both the humidity and the dry bulb temperature. Based on that relative humidity and uh, dry bulb temperature, it will automatically calculate the wet bulb temperature. Okay. So this is about the last lecture. Uh, today we'll see some more properties of moist air. Okay.
So first property of today's lecture, it is a saturated vapor pressure. So vapor pressure, uh, it is generated term for partial pressure. If I take a mixture of air, so it contains dry air and water vapor. If I take partial pre pressure of it, so in general it is called as vapor pressure. If I take partial pressure of water vapor, so in general it is called as vapor pressure. Okay. So we are not, we are now dealing with saturated vapor pressure. So it is the saturated partial pressure of water vapor in the dry bulk temperature. Okay. So if I take a condition of a saturated air, in that case, whatever will be the partial pressure of the water vapor, that partial pressure of water vapor in the saturated air, that will be called as saturated vapor pressure. Okay. So there is a formula actually how to calculate the saturated vapor pressure that will that I will show you. So this is readily available in the thermodynamic tables and charts. That table I will show you in the next slide. As I suggest the following regression equation for saturated vapor pressure of water, which is valid for 0 to 100 degree Celsius. Now as I have given this uh, equation, the equation I will show you. So this is the equation. Uh, which will give the value of saturation, saturated vapor pressure. So in this equation, what you see here is the, it is a natural log of uh, saturated pressure equal to C1 divided by T into C2. So these are some uh, constant plus C3T plus C4T square C5TQ plus Cn log T. Okay, so this T should be in Kelvin. This uh, whatever pressure here it is, you will get that will be in kilo Pascal. Okay. So it is said that Ashray suggests the following regression equation. Now why it is called as a regression equation? So this uh, study you have done uh, in experimental analysis uh, in your high school also, in your college also. So we conduct an experiment, we get some values, we plot it on X and Y graph. Okay, so the graph for open points so plot for so X, Y, uh, X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3. Then what we do, uh, then we try to connect those points, okay. जर आप लिनियर एनालिसिस कराए तो अपन सग पॉइंट मधु जाए लाइन ड्रॉ करते देन वी गेट इक्वेशन वाई इज इक्वल टू एम एक्स प्लस सी ओके सो वाई इक्वल टू एम एक्स प्लस सी इन दैट केस यू हेव टू फाइंड आउट द स्लोप ऑफ द लाइन दैट इज अम इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो फॉर नॉन लिनियर एनालिसिस देन यू कैन गो फॉर क्यूबिक कर यू कैन गो फॉर क्वाड्रेटिक कर सो इन दैट केस अगेन यू हेव टू फाइंड आउट द इक्वेशन ऑफ द कर सो दैट विल बी इक्वल टू अगेन वाई इज इक्वल टू uh c1 x cube plus c2 x square plus c2 c3 x plus some constant c4 so in that case you have to find out all this constant in the equation so similarly as has uh, uh, <coughs> suggested this regression equation uh, if you want to calculate the saturated vapor pressure for a given temperature okay so you can do this uh, calculation uh, if you want so i will show you the values of this constants so in this equation where p sub is equal to saturated vapor pressure of water in kilopascal and temperature is in kelvin the regression coefficients c1 to 6 is are given by so these are the constants uh, which are been found out by asray so c1 value is given here minus 5.8 e to the power 3 c2 c3 c4 c5 and 6 so you have to put this value in this equation and for a given temperature so if you look at the temperature now, it uh, it is around the 32 degrees Celsius, 33 degrees Celsius. So <clears throat> you have to convert that into Kelvin. So that will be 303, 304, 305 Kelvin. So that you have to put in this equation. You have to calculate the log p sub. Then you have to take the inverse log, and then you will get the value of saturated vapor pressure. Okay. So you can do this activity now here uh, if you have calcium nearby. You can take this value of temperature as the 305 Kelvin, which is around uh, 32 or sorry, 33 degree, not 33. Yes, it is a 32 degree Celsius, 305 Kelvin. And then you have to calculate the uh, saturated vapor pressure. Okay. So I repeat again, uh, take the temperature value, this T value as a 305 Kelvin. Constants are there on your screen. Then you have to calculate the saturated vapor pressure. I'll give you some time of five minutes and then you can tell me the answer. Okay. I will also put this into a chat box, the value of temperature.
Okay, uh, time's up. Uh, so anybody has calculated uh, saturated vapor pressure? So I've given you the value of temperature as 305 Kelvin. So you are expected to calculate the value of uh, corresponding saturated vapor pressure. So if anybody has calculated, put in the chat box. So I will tell you another uh, very good tool that is a Microsoft Excel. In Excel also you can do various calculations. Uh, for time being, I will do this calculation in the Excel. I will show you how to do the uh, uh, draw the graph uh, for various values and how to conduct that uh, regression analysis. So uh, I have opened one window here. I have taken the temperature value starting from uh, two degrees Celsius, that is a uh, 275 uh, Kelvin degree Kelvin. So here I have to put that formula. So in Excel, you, have, you can uh, there is a feature you can put the formula, various uh, our mathematical functions are already inbuilt in Excel, Microsoft Excel. And uh, there is no need to even type all these values. So I'll show you simply what we can do in this case. So here uh, I'll erase all these things. Okay. So what I, I want to do, I want to conduct the analysis for uh, every five degree Kelvin. So 275 plus five means that will be 280. Now, I don't have to type even all these uh, cells, so I just, just select these two cells, go here, this plus sign will come, then I have to drag it down. So I can drag it down where I want, so it is showing 305, so let us go up to 305, okay? Then uh, here you have to uh, uh, write that equation, whatever given in the that PPT, okay? So it is says that C1 divided by T. So C1 here it is minus 5.8 e to the power plus 3, okay? So I will put these values in that uh, cell. So here what you have to do, you have to first put equal sign, okay? So I'm putting an equal sign. And you can see here that equation will be typed. So here at the top, here in that blank space, so the equation will be typed. So now equal to C1 divided by T. So C1 here in, the, in this case, uh, it, it is a minus 5.8 e to the power three, okay? Uh, e to the power 3 uh, divided by T. So divided by T means temperature here it is a 305 Kelvin. Okay. So uh, I'll continue this. Then we have C2. C2 here it is a minus 5.5 E to the power 0 means I can take minus 5.5. So here I have to just put minus 5.5. Okay. Plus C3 into T. Now C3 here in this case C3 into T here it is, C3 is given by minus 4.86 e to the power minus 2, okay? So I have to go plus in pin bracket uh, minus 4.86 e to the power minus 2, right? I think it was 2 or 3. Yes, into C to the power minus 2, bracket complete, into T means uh, T is 305 Kelvin, okay? Now, uh, next, here in this case, it is a C4, C4 into T square. Now C4 here it is given as 4.17 e to the power minus 5 into T square. So 4.17, so I'll put this into bracket, 4.17 e to the power minus 5 into T square. So 305 raised to the power. So on your uh, uh, keyboard or laptop, there is a button there you have to put the shift six so that will give you to, to the power so temperature square okay so this will solve up to this point okay then we have c5 into t cube so c5 here it is given as minus 1.44 e to the power minus 8 into t cube okay so plus in bracket minus 1.44 e to the power minus 8, okay, into e to the power 3, okay. So here it comes out to be like this. Then plus, here it is C6 into log of T. So C6 is even here it as a 6.54. So 6.54 uh, into log. So log for log you can you can simply type here for log as ln. So 
So ln it will take a natural log into 305. Okay, 305 is our temperature. So this will give a value of 1.54. Okay. Now you don't have to type for each cell. Okay. So there is a temperature of 285. You don't have to type for each cell. So I'll just maximize this so, so that you can see. Okay, so you don't have to type for each cell. So for this cell, we have typed this much big formula here. And for next cell, we don't have to type the same formula. Just we can go here on this cell, uh, go to the plus sign at the corner, and you have to double click it. So double click, that will give you the values like this. Okay. Uh, now in this case, what I have done here, uh, I have taken here the value as 305. So you can take the value of this temperature. So here temperature for this cell, it is a 275. So here I will replace this 305 by the corresponding cell. So this will be 275. Again, uh, this cell will be replaced by the, again, 275. This will be replaced by the 275. This will be replaced again by 275. So I'm just selecting the cell. So when I select the cell, it will automatically take the B5. B5 means B column and fifth number of ray, uh, row. So that will give you the value of B5. Okay. So again, 305 will be replaced by this cell. So this way, your value goes to minus 3.36. Okay. So you are getting such values. Now, how to calculate the P? P will be the exponential of reverse of uh, inverse of the logarithm. Or you can simply type here it as exponential. So exponential of this value. Exponential of this value. This will give you 0 0.69202. So again, I will go to the uh, bottom plus sign and then I will double click. So this will give me the values for various temperatures, right? So this way I have, what I have done, I have, uh, for uh, number of temperatures, I have calculated their corresponding saturated vapor pressure. From where I have calculated this, I have used uh, this formula. So this formula I have used and I have uh, created an Excel. In Excel, we can do the remaining analysis. Now, if you want to uh, introduce a graph here, so you can introduce that graph also. So just you have to go to the uh, insert. In insert, you have to introduce a graph here. So it is taking a bit time. Okay. So in this case, you can uh, uh, have to select the data. Okay. So why I'm showing all of this? Uh, because uh, uh, these are very important office skills. So whenever you work in industry, Excel is uh, the must skill nowadays you should have. Excel and Word. So in Word also, you have to you, you should be able to create a very good report so that your client will get impressed. You have to do the analytics in the Excel. And also one more skill, that is the PowerPoint. That should be always very good. So whenever you have to show the presentation of your company to your client, that time the PowerPoint helps. Okay? So I add one uh, series here. Let us say series one here. So series X values, I will take here temperature values, all this. Then a series Y value, I will take all this saturated pressure values. Okay. And uh, that's it. So we'll get a graph here. So you can see here, I will uh, minimize this graph. You can see here on X axis, I have selected temperature. On Y axis, I have taken the saturated vapor pressure. So as the temperature will increase, this saturated vapor will also increase. So it is shown by this graph. Okay. So this is a short demo about how you can use uh, Microsoft Excel for the data analysis. So you have uh, one uh, analytic equation here that is the log of P saturated. I have converted that into this uh, Excel. For various temperature values, I have calculated the saturated vapor curve. Then you can simply uh, insert a curve or a graph. In graph, you have to select the data. I have selected the temperature and pressure data here. Then I get this relation. Okay. So it says that as the temperature is increasing, 
saturated vapor is also increasing but you can see that slope here is it is less okay so this is not a steep slope it is very gentle slope we can observe here so the values are not increasing rapidly they are increasing at a slower rate okay so this way you can do that the analysis okay so we'll continue our part here uh, saturated vapor pressure okay so here we have a temperature so first we'll focus on the left part that is the uh, table temperature versus saturated vapor pressure so as you can see from the table also if i take the minus 7 degrees celsius so wait, just let me start that laser point if i take the minus 7 degrees celsius it's corresponding saturated pressure it, here it is a 3.7 uh, 10 to the power minus 3 bar okay as the temperature will increase from minus 7 to 7 degrees celsius so at the 7 saturated pressure here it is a 10.3 so you can see here minus 7 it was 3.7 plus 7 we have 10.3 so as the temperature has increased saturated vapor pressure also increases if you go to our now current temperature let us say 32 for 32 it is a 48.1 so for 32 saturated vapor pressure is 48.1 uh, what is its meaning? So, what is its meaning? If I have 32 degree temperature in atmospheric air, so the water vapor condensed soil, the partial pressure, water vapor is 48.1. I have a mixture of atmospheric air. So, the water vapor is dry air. So, the water vapor is partial pressure 48.1, uh, 10 to power minus 3 bar oil. Okay, so in that case, the water will start to condense it. Obviously, if water condensed with my manje kaya hai, water to partial pressure hai, 48 pressure kami hai. Okay, so it can be 25, it can be 30, it can be 15, depending on the value. So, when that 25 value will reach to 48, that time water particles will start to condense it. So, this is the concept of saturation. That is uh, 32 degrees Celsius and 48 uh, millibar, what will happen? Water particles will start to so this is the concept of saturation so this is about this table if you uh, look at this right diagram here it is graph is shown so this graph also gives you the same data so as the temperature here temperature is plotted on x-axis and saturated vapor is plotted on the y-axis so they have plotted the data for various values so what they have observed here it is a that uh, they are directly proportional so as the temperature increases saturated vapor pressure also increases okay Similar analysis I have also done uh, in my Excel file. Here also you can see as the temperature is increasing, the saturated vapor is also increasing. You can uh, verify these values also from the table. Okay, so if you want to write the equation, you can write it. Okay, so I hope uh, you have written this equation. So the bottom line here it is, as the temperature will increase, saturated vapor pressure will also increase. 
so this is a reason uh, if you see the summer uh, weather condition that is unhara madhe kay asto tar obviously saturated vapor condition vapor pressure water cha jasta asto jasta asto ya jar ta kay tar it is less likely to condensate mai tar chances kame ahet water cha condensation honayche te jar tumhi winter getla winter madhe kay asto temperature kame asto kame asto manje kay asto ya jasta chances ahet ki tumchu water cha condensation hoil जो तुम्हें बता हिवाड़ तुझे सका होते डो फॉर्मेशन डो पाना साचले तुम्हारा दिता तो कस टेम्परेचर कमी साचुरेशन वेपर प्रेसर देखी कमी होता कमी होता चांसेस वाड़ा कि तुम वॉटर च कंडेन्सेशन हो हवेतल वॉटर वेपर च तुम्हारे घर के सर्फेसेस वर कि जो पान हवे पान सर्फेस तथा वॉटर च कंडेन्सेशन हो so this is a concept of saturated vapor pressure now moving on a very important term here it is the relative humidity which is also written as rh or you can see there is a symbol for it for relative humidity so what is the relative humidity relative humidity is defined as the ratio of the mole fraction of water vapor in moist air to the mole fraction of water vapor in saturated air at the same temperature and pressure okay at the same temperature and pressure if i take one sample of uh, uh, moist air if i take another sample of saturated air the moist air madhe water cha je mole fraction ahe concentration ahe te jar mi saturated air madhle water vapor cha concentration se kiwa mole fraction se compare kela so whatever ratio i will get that ratio is nothing but the relative humidity okay तो यू कैन कन्सिडर टू फेनॉमिन आता जी तुम्हें सद्या जी एटमोस्फेरिक कंडीशन है ती मॉइस्ट एयर है तो मॉइस्ट एयर मे वॉटर चे जे पार्सल प्रेसर है तो तुम्हें घया ओके एक कंडीशन अभी तुम्हें एज्यूम करा कि हाच प्रेसरला हाच बायोमेट्रिक प्रेसरला कि ही एयर आता सैचुरेशन हो सैचुरेशन की कंडीशन तुम्हें एज्यूम करा तथल तुम्हें वॉटर च पार्सल प्रेसर घया इफ यू टेक दैट रेशो देन वॉट एवर रेशो यूल गेट दैट इज नथिंग बट रिटिव ह्यूमिडिटी आता मॉइस्ट सैचुरेटेड एयर मधल वॉटर च पार्सल प्रेसर ये ऑलरेडी तुम्हारा कुछ मिला सो फ्रॉम दिस टेबल हा टेबल मे तुम्हारा वैल्यू मिलती सैचुरेटेड कंडीशन लॉटर च पार्सल प्रेसर कि मॉइस्ट एयर मॉइस्ट एयर मधल तुम्हें वॉटर च पार्सल प्रेसर मेजर करू शता टेक दट रेसो दैट इज नथिंग बट द रिटिव ह्यूमिडिटी ओके So using perfect gas equation, we can show that. So they, this is how we can write the in mathematical way. So phi is equal to or R H is equal to partial pressure of water vapor divided by saturation pressure of pure water vapor in the same temperature. So this partial pressure of water vapor in moist air that can be written as P V, and partial pressure of water vapor in saturated air that can be written as a P S. Okay. So P S we have already seen in the previous slide. So if I take the ratio of PV by PS, that is nothing but the relative humidity. Okay. So I will give you another exercise. So let us go back to this slide. So in this slide, we see a table here. At the table, what is happening? Can you see that 32 degrees Celsius temperature la saturated water vapor pressure kitiya hai 48 hai. Now let us assume at this temperature. Now while we are attend, you are attending the lecture, and I am giving the lecture. In that case, let us assume that this. Uh, the uh, partial pressure of water vapor here in this condition it is a 25 uh, millibar okay so 32 degree celsius i am assuming now in this condition partial pressure of water vapor it is a 25 millibar but for saturation condition we need a 48 millibar now how to calculate the relative humidity you have to take the ratio of 25 divided by 48 okay So if you take the ratio of 25 divided by 48, water value will get that will be your relative humidity. Okay, understood? Or I will repeat again. See here, I have a table. There are values of temperature versus saturation vapor pressure. So I have 32 degrees Celsius. So I am assuming that the surface temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. Ah, hey. Table, what I am saying is that saturation condition law water to partial pressure of 48.1 millibar. so that will be in saturated that air saturated will tya madhe water cha partial pressure asnar hai 48.1 okay but now air is now saturated air is moist air so let us assume that in moist air the partial pressure of water vapor now in this condition it is a 
25 millibar okay now what i will do i will take the ratio of 25 divided by 48 this ratio is nothing but the relative humidity okay so you can do the calculation of 25 divided by 48 i think you will get some value around 0.54 something so that 0.5 is nothing but the relative humidity but relative humidity is not given in 0.5 0.3 it is given uh, in percentage so the 0.5 means it will be 50% if it is a point six that will be 60% okay so relative humidity is defined as the ratio of mole fraction of water vapor in moist air to the mole fraction of water vapor in saturated air at the same temperature and pressure so we have this uh, uh, mathematical equation in front of you phi is equal to partial pressure of water vapor divided by saturation pressure of pure water vapor at the same temperature on in uh, short words you can say pv divided by p z okay so you can write this equation okay so i hope you are written the equation now relative humidity is normally expressed as the percentage so when phi is 100 percent then air is saturated so this is a logic or uh, common sense here so we can say that when the rh is 1 over we cannot say 1 so it will be 100 percent 100 percent means pb will, will be equal to pz pz means that air is saturated okay so remember this concept uh, and understand this concept uh, and make it concrete because uh, when we we'll, i will draw the psychrometric chart that time this concept will help you okay so how to draw the psychrometric chart this whole idea based on this concepts okay so relative humidity it is the ratio of pv divided by pz when it is 1 or 100% that means the air is saturated So I think uh, this is uh, enough today because the uh, strain is less and the concepts are very important. In next lecture, uh, we'll see what is the humidity ratio, okay? And uh, next, so we'll see what is the relation between dew point temperature and relative humidity, right? So if you have any question up to this point, relate to relative humidity or saturated vapor pressure or saturation temperature pressure, that you can ask, okay? Yes. Any questions? Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. So now that uh, final year exam uh, is now going to be conducted in the MCQ manner, ah, uh, and uh, it is very ob obvious that the students will give that exam from their home, and uh, now we are uh, providing the MCQ book booklets to the students also. So this final year students they have the subjects like plastic engineering on that. Now the faculty are providing them the MCQ booklet. Obviously that most of the questions in the exam will be asked from those MCQ questions. So I think that difficulty level of this examination will be less uh, because of this COVID situation. And uh, I'm I don't know, but there is a high probability that students will do the copy. uh because uh, their mcq and answer will be ready with them and they have to just put the answers in the mcq test 
yes so things are now like this so i don't know same can be happened with you like uh, those students who have uh, just entered into be for your first semester this mode will uh, will take place so you, you may have to also give in future uh, mcq test online mcq test if the, this covid situation get worse okay so let us hope this uh, covid situation gets better uh, better means uh, the student uh, the patients will be reduced and this, uh, there will be vaccine available then uh, we can conduct the lectures in the classroom then you will give the uh, exam sitting in the classroom not in your home giving the mcq test right uh, right so what do you think uh, like uh, uh, is this mcq mode is good or should we go with the conventional mode yes pradyumn yes sir so do you think this mcq exams are uh, better compared to conventional or conventional are better conventional are better than mcq yes sir why what do you think okay so pradyumn think conventional are better yes because there is a you know this environment whole environment the peer environment uh you study the subject and there is a rush uh, to score marks so even not to score marks you want to pass the subject but in mcq there is high probability that all will to score good marks because uh, there is a limitation on uh, mcq like uh, one chapter can if i uh, want to extract the questions for your mcq test one chapter will give maximum 20 questions 20 to 25 questions so this way uh, things will be there anyway uh, this last day student they have enjoyed their college life fully only they have missed their last two months i think uh, you guys only trapped in this uh, covid situation uh, let us hope this things will be better okay so anyway uh, this is i think enough for today's lecture i'm considering the strain next lecture i will take the remaining properties of moisture then we will start drawing the psychrometric chart right so quickly i take the attendance